Right. Probably a lot of things you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. Mike, we've uh, talked a little bit about some of the, the newer analytical technologies. Let's talk about some of the emerging technologies we're seeing regarding field sampling. Some exciting stuff happening out there. What, what have you seen? Yeah, absolutely. There's There's been a lot of uh, developments recently in the field of sensor technology. So there, there are companies out there developing technology to give us uh, an answer rapidly in the field. And so, you know, we see this as being a benefit to companies that are Maybe they're out trying to map plume a site, get an assessment of where, where the hot spots are. Uh, we see it as potentially helpful for, um, you know, companies dealing with treatment, you know, getting a rapid assessment of what the treatment levels are. Is their process working? Uh, and when I say rapid, I mean, like, within a couple hours, it can get okay. results. So you don't have to send these samples off. You know, the technology is still young, still being developed. But if it, if it comes to fruition, I think that's going to be really helpful for folks in the field. It's coming along in terms of detection limits. Uh, you know, right now they're getting down into the hundreds of parts per trillion okay. without any sort of pre-concentration. But if they want to go lower, they can also do concentrating techniques and, and go even lower. Interesting. So now in your mind, would this be something that's useful for quantitative testing in the field or is this more of a screening type technology? Yeah, so it's, it's more of a screen right now. Okay. Uh, the way it is, it's, it's a good screen. It's an assessment of the total, right? So it's not saying that there is, you know, PFOA or PFOA. It's not speciating at this point. Right. It's saying, hey, there's, here's the total PFAS load in this sample. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's more akin, if you think about it in terms of EPA methodologies, it would be more in line with what the outcome of a 1621 method is. Okay, right sure. It's so like an AOF, CIC. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So now for folks that are looking for quantitative data that does reach those lower reporting limits, but they need speciated quantitative data and they need it on a rapid turnaround time, are there options out there? What, what can we do? Yeah, so that, that's a great question. And we definitely see the need for that. Um, you know, we, we, some of our customer base is, for example, working in sample treatment, right? So they're they're trying to clean up a site or they're trying to remediate a site and uh, they need turnaround quickly because they have their team members out in the field. It's very expensive. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, smart people out in the field cost them money. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there is options. Uh, one of the one of the things we've been working on uh, at our Wilmington lab is uh, a technique called direct inject. So, it's, it's, it's basically you take the sample and you add your internal standard to it, you mix it up, and then you run it. So you bypass the solid phase extraction step, uh, and what you end up doing is a small dilution on it, actually. Uh, and then we use the power of the newer generation mass spectrometers to allow us to still detect down to those part per trillion levels. Right. And when, when we say direct inject, we don't mean direct inject right into the mass spec. You mean into the instrument upstream of the chromatography. Absolutely. Yeah. There's still it's the same chromatographic techniques that are being used on all the other standard methodologies. So it does normal chromatographic technique. Uh, the, the real savings in time is the extraction. So like a drinking water... 250 milliliter sample has to go through the cartridge. Right. Uh, it takes you know, a good amount of time. Uh, and even uh, the non-potable methods that, that uh, exist right now, 1633, that's a 500 mil sample. So it takes, you know, a significant amount of time to run that sample through your SP cartridge and you risk clogging it. And right. so there's a lot of potential headaches with that that can come along. And with direct inject, how much do you need? So we, right now, uh, we're trying to develop it in a line with method 8327. So we would go with a five mil sample size. Okay. So, yeah, another benefit is, you know, if you think about the shipping, and sure. storage, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to deal with a five mil tube than it is a 500 mil tube or a 250 mil tube. So there's a lot of potential benefits. And right now, you know, all our data are very positive in terms of being able to hit the same reporting limits as 1633, for example. Okay. Uh, and, you know, the, the prep process is significantly faster. I mean, you know, we're talking... In a couple hours, you can prep a full batch versus, you know, a half a day. Right. Much faster. So we're talking about data that's going to be much quicker, easier to ship, cheaper to ship, right? Uh, less sample volume required and no sacrifice to the quantitational, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And even, even to add on to the benefits, there's no recovery losses other than what could potentially be lost on the, in the tube itself, right? Right. So you don't have to go through solid phase extraction. So Super there's steps. no, there's less steps, less complication and better outcome. Sounds like a win to me. So good deal, Mike. All right.
Well, in the world of uh, PFAS, which is forever changing, appreciate it. And uh, hope you'll tune in for the next episode.